Hi guys! Welcome back to Encaustic Hacks with Karen and this is episode four. I can't believe I'm on my fourth one. I have so many more to share with you um, and I think this one is a really good one. Um, today I want to talk to you about how do you transport your encaustic art? Um, for many people, it can be kind of a daunting experience because we worry about the edges of our paintings getting chipped or broken or smushed or banged up in some way. And so we want to have a really safe and um, soft something to cushion it and make sure that it gets to where it needs to be um, and be intact when it gets there. So um, I want to talk to you about some of the things that I've come up with and um, you'll learn about my hack. So one of the first things is that I like to save a lot of old um, sheets and blankets and towels and I keep those in a big container so in the event that I quickly need to get a piece of art from my home to a gallery or to a collector's home I can quickly wrap it up and know that it's protected and cushioned. That's one thing. We all have extra blankets and towels and whatnot that we could use. So the other thing is some people like to go uh, the professional route and for smaller pieces they might have a case that they use and I'm going to show you this case that I got recently. Let me move this so you can see. This is a case This is a really nice, large felt case that you can see has a piece of art in there. I can actually put a couple of smaller pieces of art in there and it's, it's really nice, it's protective. It's uh, 22 by 31 inches and um, it is by a brand called Profolio. Um, Midtown bags and I was lucky enough to score this bad boy at Hobby Lobby. It normally is $30 but for whatever reason they had several of them in the clearance section for $7.49. Well I took everything they had. <laughs> so I have that. That's one way but I can't plan to buy so many of those bags. So something I've come up with in the meantime is um, something that you may or may not have lying around, but um, what I have is a, just a second, a pool noodle. A lot of you have kids that have used these in pools. Um, during the warmer seasons, they sell these at the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store. Um, you can find them pretty much anywhere. However, at the time that I needed these, it was in the fall of last year and I needed a lot of them, a lot, to get to my art to a show that I was in. And um, I actually went on Facebook and asked people if they had any spare um, ones of these. <laughs> And I was so lucky that so many people that lived in my town were willing to part with their pool noodles. So how do we use the pool noodles? Well, so one of the things I do is, and by the way, they do come in a variety of sizes. So some are bigger than others. And there's some skinny guys too. So depending on the size that you need, you're going to take your pool noodle and you can take um, a sharp, anything sharp, um, a knife, a pair of scissors, and just score it down the side. And you can see this is very imperfect the way that I cut it, which doesn't really matter. And then after you cut it, you want to kind of give it a little stretch. You know, it might look like it's cracking on the other side, but that's okay. This is what the back looks like. So it hasn't fallen apart yet. And so what do I do? I take my pool noodle and here's a piece of art. Oops. Here's a piece of art. 
and it's, I'm gonna move this back. It's on a wood panel. Oops, there we go, sorry. I'm back. <laughs> it's on a wood panel. And um, these are the wood edges that I'm concerned about, particularly right here where um, it could chip off a little bit. So I'm gonna take my pool noodle and I'm gonna hold this. This one's actually too big for this piece, but I'm just showing you for example's sake. It does not have to fit the exact length of your piece. Just to even have a small piece um, is great. It keeps the edge protected. So I take this and then I open this side and I'm gonna give it a little hug. You see that? Hugged by the pool noodle. And you don't have to even do this on all the sides. Um, doing it on two sides is fine, especially if you don't have that many pool noodles. And I'm gonna show you what happens, so when you have two sides like this that have a pool noodle, when you lay the piece down, let's see if I can show you. The, the painting is actually not even laying flat on the surface. It's propped up, which is great. And this actually allowed me to stack multiple paintings in the back of my car and none of the paintings touched each other, which was amazing. So I didn't worry about the paintings bumping into each other because it's like they have bumpers now. So that is my latest hack, pool noodles, and I hope that you get a chance to try it out and let me know how it goes. And I'll be back with many more encaustic hacks. Thanks for stopping by.